For this episode of The Build, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina. Home of the Panthers, Pork Barbecue, Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I'm sure a ton of other things that I'm missing. But I wanted to meet up with Matt and see his M2 in person. I wanted to know what was going on underneath the hood. I wanted to see all the little details that he's put all the time into make. And so, I mean, honestly, I think we just gotta check out the car. Let's go see it. All right, guys, welcome to the build. Today we have Matt and the M2, or the M2 Ghost, right? You got a name name for it. There's a story behind it. It's, uh, it's definitely a unique car. There's a lot going on with this car. It's got everything from appearance to suspension to the interior, too. I mean, it's really a well-done car, but it's also, there's so much like little refinement. You walk around, you notice kind of something new every time you go around it. But anyway, Matt, thanks for, uh, thanks for meeting up with us. I know we came to you, but Thank you guys for coming out. I mean, I had to see the car, so. Yeah, this is amazing. So, this has a name, right? This car is not just, you know, you've kind of made the name a little bit famous, but like the car is the M2 Ghost. What's, what's the name behind that? So, long story short, I had an M2 before this, and I, it, it was my dream car. I had modified it a little bit, had downpipe, um, intake, wheels, springs, and I, I was, convinced I was never gonna have another car. At one point, I realized I needed to have the fenders rolled, so I was on my way to getting the fenders rolled and one of the tires was filleted by the side of the fender. So that ended up in the car bouncing off curb, going through tree, and when I stopped, I looked down, I see a fire coming off of the floor. Um, it, it was like an electrical fire, because it was a small little blue flame. Uh, I tried putting it out with the, I think the floor mat from the back and it just started to spread, so I, I'm thinking, Paul Walker, I just hop out of the car. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, yeah. It never hit the gas tank, luckily, so it wasn't like a big explosion, but it was just kind of like a sad thing to see. But first thing I thought was, really lucky to be walking out of this. This is a really well-made car. And so then when the tow truck driver comes up the wrecker, I guess, uh, he was pulling out all his gear, and I walked up and introduced myself, and he, he asked who I was, and I said, I'm, that's my car. And he lost all the blood in his face. He got, you know, goosebumps, and he, Gave me one of those looks like you don't, you don't see often out of somebody unless they're really, you know, kind of shaken. And he said, "You're, a, you're a ghost, man. I, I, I don't know if you're real or not because I've been doing this 12 years and you shouldn't be alive right now. Just, I'm, I'm looking for the body bag. Um, this is just, you don't see that much fire and see the person just walk away." The ghost theme itself follows over also because of uh, Koenigsegg. I used to follow Saabs and yeah. Koenigsegg itself is like a Swedish brand. So the ghost symbol is a Swedish theme for, a, okay. uh, it's, it's an old fighter squadron that they used to have, the ghost squadron. Yeah, um, I so I have one of the stickers on the car. It's actually from the Koenigsegg factory in the original template because they're all about Swedish pride trying to spread and That's keep cool. that going. So I named this car the ghost because it's a memory of the old car. Uh, this car was created because the old car doesn't exist anymore. But I kind of had a chance to redo it, and as horrible as that wreck was, as lucky as I was to get out of it, I would do it again. Um, you know, I'd, I'd lose the old car, I would That's go through. That's a new perspective on life, too. Yeah, absolutely, because you know? every day is a gift, and I definitely didn't have that perspective before. And this is a dream come true um, on more than one level, so it really makes it a lot more meaningful. Um, yeah. So that's why it's called there's, there's the Ghost. The
The first thing that pops out of me other than the wheels is the wide body. Uh, the wide body is definitely a, a different look than a lot of wide bodies I've seen. What's going on with the actual hardware that you have mounted with? So normally with wide bodies, I've seen when they rivet the car, there's holes going throughout the piece so that yeah. they're attached. Um, these are bolted, but they're bolted from behind. Gotcha. And they're a carbon fiber structure, so there's a hollow space in between with seams. Cool. So they had to cut out the fender liner, go in, shape these, bolt them from behind. Same with this piece, same with that. So these are carbon fiber that have been painted alpine white and then masked off. And then they had to reshape the fender liner to make room for the wheels and the tires and the wider stance and everything. So it's all functional. Um, it's really strong. All right, man. Well, let's, let's move into the interior. Let's first talk about, I think, that the part that everyone wants to know about, the seats. They're a Recaro Sportster CS, and they're put together by a guy named Recaro Max on Instagram. He does an amazing job. He builds for AMG, he builds for Audi, he builds for anything you want. It ends up being a lot cheaper than some of the OEM Plus options or some of the OEM performance options, but. What was your main reason from going to OEM to these? So, I'm a little bit taller. I didn't realize it until I had some really long drives for some bad weather. I didn't have enough back support. And also, I, once I went from those to these, having the seats be about six inches lower, I can see, I guess, the way most people can see now when they're driving. Yeah. And it's, it's so much nicer. Um, I, yeah. I feel like like a normal sized person driving. I've, I've... I could definitely tell that because when I first sat in, I was like, damn, I'm low. But, but you're, also, <laughs> you're also a lot taller than me. So it makes sense. <laughs> going into the actual carbon fiber trim, is that the OEM from? Some is, some isn't, so it's kind of a mixture. BMW has their in-performance line. Yeah. So this is the in-performance LED steering wheel with the Alcantara and gotcha. the carbon fiber. That's got the shift points on it. It's got some information like coolant temp, water temps that you can't get on the M2 normally that are on other oh, cool. M models. So it's kind of an essential thing if you're modifying an M2, I think. The rear of the car. Um, I know at some point there was like a little fender bender or something that screwed up the rear end. But it seems like every time you get in some little part, it gives you an excuse to modify it some different way, right? You gotta try to make lemonade anytime you can. Um, so I got rear-ended by a semi truck and I lucked out because the OEM trunk and was more expensive yeah. than an agency power carbon fiber trunk. So I went that direction. I oh. love the E46 CSL. That's always been my, it sort of looks similar to that. And that was the real trick is getting that duck bill. And then I had the mask off certain areas so that it would look like it was fitted with carbon pieces, not so overwhelming with carbon, sort of match the rest of the car, but I love it. Agency Power did such a great job on it. Um, M4 Peyton Body painted it and it doesn't look like it's made of carbon fiber. What about the rear bumper? Because th So this is the original, is this the stock rear bumper? It's the stock rear bumper. They do add on bumper extensions that are carbon fiber um, from PSM again. They bolt to the bumper and then bolt to the actual fender extension. Okay. Then underneath there's a diffuser. Uh, it's a three-piece diffuser that PSM makes. That's, I, I, have, I have too many favorite parts of the car. That's one of my favorite parts. PSM makes one that's a little bit more aggressive than the BMW. It's, they were able to fit it without having to trim the tray or anything. Yeah. Uh, I think Dynan's the only exhaust they found that they installed any of these kits that they didn't have to like cut out the whole diffuser. So you can see underneath, it's a nice like aerodynamic flat piece going all the way back in. And... All right guys, I know you guys want to know about the suspension, the engine, the exhaust, some of the fun parts, but we're actually gonna wait to show you guys those. We're going to a little shop a little bit later in this and that way we can get it up, we can actually show you what's going on underneath the car, get a little more detail of, of what's actually going on. For now, we're gonna head out, take a little drive, see how this thing sounds, and uh, we'll check back in with you guys at the next part. Shorty wanna come into the sweet light or green light. I pull up in the cool. You don't really know about me, right? Maybe you do. And she be like, oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> all right guys the moment you've all been waiting for where we actually talk about the engine the suspension just what's going on underneath the car we get the car in a lift here and we're actually at dynamic auto tune in north carolina we got matt of course you guys met him earlier but uh matt it's nice seeing you again yeah it's been a really long time since yesterday but tell me a little bit about what dynamic auto tune has done for this car dynamic auto tune basically they were integral in the whole journey uh, for creating this car. Um, I mentioned yesterday that this car is kind of like in memory of my old one. Yeah, yeah. So I had some ideas about where I wanted to go. They made it happen. Okay, so the front end is comprised of a couple different components, companies. Uh, the PSM portion, they have the bumper extensions here, carbon fiber that it continues on from the kit and the fender pieces. Uh, they have these teeth pieces coming over to the center piece, which is made for if you have to have a license plate like out in California, you can attach that there. This is a PSM lip, and then this is an APR splitter underneath to extend the lip. Also to help support it, that's what these adjustable rods are for. The lip itself is more aesthetic, but it helps with airflow as well. Um, then we have the IND, they make the carbon fiber grills we have here. And then the OSS headlights, uh, probably my favorite part of the front. OSS built them with carbon fiber housings inside. Uh, they have double OLED rings. They have the M tricolor stripes highlighted inside here. Then they have uh, what they call their X eyes. I only got half an X, so the blue portion inside there, it's actually based on the X7 concept. And they can make anything you need. OSS, uh, kind of like PSM, they're craftsman shop, guy who owns the place, does everything by hand. So as much of this car as I can, I have done by hands-on craftsmanship. Uh, just that's the kind of thing I like to do. I'm sure everyone wants to know about what you have going on with the wheels and the tires. I went with a BBS E88 and had a hybrid made, mixed between the BBS E88s and the RT88s. Normally they have a polished silver lip. I had a friend powder coat black, so it's okay. got the gloss black lip. The center is still satin. Poyo tires, the proxies are triple eight R's. Okay. In the front, I'm going with 265 by 30s. Okay. The back's 325 by 30. Wheel size itself, the front's 10 and a half, uh, minus seven for the offset. The back is 12 and a half and plus five for the okay. offset. Cool. The, having the wider wheel really made a big, big difference uh, over the last car that I drove over the factory setup on um, just so much more trackability. <laughs> Okay, let's see, we've got the KW Club Sport three-way adjustable coilovers. Um, those are basically to make up for the wider stance. You can adjust the rate, you can adjust the height, and you can adjust the distance it travels. Really helpful when you're widening things so the chassis doesn't break. On top of that, I have hybrid air, air cups. Air cups are a rather new invention. The purpose is so that when you have coilovers for performance use, and you have a low front end, you need to be able to not have the front end get ripped off if you're driving around town. Basically a compressor system on off, you can lift the front end of the car about five inches up when you need to, but you still have full performance of the coilovers and it doesn't mess with the way it's gonna handle on the track. If you come back behind here, there are fall line adjustable end links for the sway bars, and that allows you to adjust further the geometry setup underneath, basically keep the wider stance from bending, flexing things without having issues here. Uh, I have the fall line monoball, which it's a system that's found on other cars like rally cars, um, Mitsubishi Evo. It changes the system from a one-way pivot to a ball pivot joint. Big, big difference in the car. Handling-wise, changes the car almost from a, a boat to a snake, good way to describe it. Further back here, we also have the KW Club Sports for the rear, separate reservoirs as well, three-way adjustable. These are fall line motorsports adjustable control arms. They are working on the upper control arms right now. They just have this set. So I'm gonna be getting those as soon as I can. Again, this is to help compensate for the wider track. When you have adjustable coilovers, it only adjusts so much. So having the control arms adjustable, it allows everything to be put better into place so that the car performs the way you want it to, not just looking like a wide body, it actually drives like one. 
I'm glad to hear that because I feel like a lot of times wide bodies are very just like slap it on and no one does any compensation for the fact that you're going way wider. Yeah, I, when I was building the car before I planned any kind of performance, I had body kit in mind and suspension. Um, performance was the last thing on the list. I just wanted to make sure that fender wasn't going to cut the tire again and more and importantly. performance as in engine. Engine, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, sorry, like uh, I guess go fast bits. But I, I went to IND, they had their Black Friday sale. I went pretty nuts, um, basically just to make adjustable geometry underneath the car. When Matt came to us and wanted, you know, reliable horsepower, uh, we chose Dynan. Um, so we went to Dynan Stage 3, which is a uh, bigger turbo upgrade. Um, if you kind of come over here, these aren't his turbos, but um, it's 30% bigger than factory, the turbines and everything. It gets you 30% more airflow. Um, so that would give you right around 100 more horsepower, uh, 90 foot-pounds of torque just from Dynan alone. Incorporated with that, you have your dual core intercooler. Um, this keeps everything cooler, you know, so obviously on those hot days, um, it's just like a human body. So you, you, want, you want to keep everything cooler, you know, so it, it's not heat soaking. With that said, he's got the big turbo upgrade uh, with the 30% more airflow. We did incorporate that with a fab speed catless downpipe. Uh, we did the dine-in from there all the way back. Uh, it's a free flow exhaust, um, so it maximizes obviously that's pushing air through, it's getting it out the back. Um, with that said, with the turbo and everything, it gives you a great sound with a little bit of burble. We still have the dining tune on it, um, so we didn't maximize the downpipes as much, but he does want reliability, and needless to say, this isn't a trailer queen. He loves to drive this car, so. So up here, uh, Matt loves his carbon fiber, so does Dynan. Um, so he went with uh, high flow carbon fiber intake. He did go with the in inventory um, engine cover to obviously enhance the uh, carbon fiber with that. So uh, when we took it to the dyno, um, it did not have the downpipes. We did do uh, 403 to the wheels um, with it. And, um, but the guy did say with the size of the tires in the back, there's about a 15 um, horsepower lost there with those tires so i'm gonna take it <laughs> love it you gotta, yeah you gotta count every one right yeah i mean it's it's not 402 it's 403. <laughs> guys thanks for watching another episode of the build today we had the m2 ghost at dynamic auto tune you guys got to see all underneath the car inside the car in the engine underneath you know virtually every part to this amazing car but anyways guys that's going to conclude the episode thanks for watching <laughs>